In this week's episode, we'll take a look at a game between John and yours truly in the far court versus the mother-son duo of Nate and Vicky in the near court. We'll learn what you should do when your partner goes back for a lob, something super easy you can try right away to be a better blocker, and also something you might want to try in that oh crap moment. Let's break it down. Here's how this works. You send us highlights, great plays, good plays, and not so good plays. With the help of Coach Alex Fox, we break it down. You learn, we watch, and we all get better. This is Pick a Ball Breakdown. Alex Fox joins us now, and we're going to break down a couple of things in this play. And one of the first things we're going to break down is that lob retrieval by Nate. So let's give a little rewind here. And Alex, what should Vicky be doing on this plate? Nate does a really nice job of chasing this thing down, and but he's off the court. Vicky stays here at the line, and I get this question all the time about what should I do when my partner goes back to retrieve a lob? So what should Vicky be doing here? Right, so it's, as soon as Vicky sees that uh, Nate is not is not gonna be able to take an overhead on, on this shot and he's gonna go back and circle around it, uh, she needs to come back with him, at least to, I'd say about mid court, um, just to give herself um, a little more time to react to the, uh, the opponent's shot coming back off of the lob retrieval. It also makes Nate not have to be so perfect with his drop shot, um, making him feel a little bit more free. Um, if he were to leave it up, it's not the end of the world. Well, the good news here is that Nate really is perfect with his drop shot. He goes back and gets it and then hits the perfect drop shot right into the kitchen. And now let's talk a little bit about my choices here. What I do is I go right at Vicky and she does a really nice job of blocking it right there. But what are some of my other choices here in this situation? Nate's not even in the screen here. What, what should I be thinking about? <laughs> I would hit it to the guy not on the screen, Frank. <laughs> um, you take the bait right here, pretty much. Let's go ahead and in our heads, just kind of put Nate back in this picture. Say he's up here at the kitchen line right next to Vicky. Would that then be the correct shot choice, do you think, for you to drive it right there? Well, probably not because it's off the bounce, below the net. You're having to hit up on the ball. So nothing really changes just because Nate is removed here. You're still attacking prematurely, I'd say. Right here, I would opt for keeping the person off of the screen. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't do that. I hit it right at Vicky and she blocks it. And then we get into this exchange. And what it does is it allows uh, Nate to quickly get back up at the line. So we're all back up here at the line. And then we have a couple of really great blocks by John. And we want to talk about that. Vicky sends a shot uh, his way and talk a little bit about how John handles this shot. On this shot, uh, Vicky, I can't tell if it if she meant to quite attack there or if it's an elevated uh, dink. I think it was kind of maybe a mixture of both. But in any case, I want you to notice that uh, John's body positioning here. He's angled slightly facing the ball, ready for anything that comes his way. Uh, that allows the ball not to get behind him and, and, and him to have his paddle in front of him and he sends it back perfectly and unattackable. And then Vicky goes in and retrieves it and sends it right back at John again and here we have uh, an interesting situation. We've got the ball coming high to John and he's ready for it. I love the way he has his paddle up high and ready to go. Uh, Nate's paddle is down low at his waist and you were telling me that's not necessarily a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. No, because what happens here is Vicky sends this thing a little higher than she would want. Um, so that's what, what brings uh, John's paddle up. Um, and he's so he's able to hit down on this ball. See, he's not worried about Vicky um, hitting down because his block previous to that was so good. She had to hit up from below the net. So he's not worried about something in his feet right here. Um, but Nate does not have that luxury. Uh, Nate has to be at the ready uh, because because John's able to hit down from above the net on this ball. Um, so he has to protect his feet and it's a lot easier to react um, from, from a low position upward than it is uh, vice versa. You don't want to be what I call spear fishing. You don't want to be stabbing downward. Um, that's not going to win you too many points. Unfortunately, Nate puts this one into the net. Is there anything he could have done differently to try to get that ball over the net? 
Uh, so I call this situation a kind of an oh crap situation. <laughs> At this point in time, if you're Vicky and Nate, you're playing with house money. <laughs> you're supposed to lose this point. Um, if you if you don't, hey, be happy. What I like to see is is a two handed backhand in these in these oh crap situations. Just give yourself uh, some quicker reflexes and a little bit more uh, strength and stability in those blocking type situations. That's going to do it for this episode of Pickleball Breakdown. If you want us to break down your game, send a link to your video to pickleballbreakdown at gmail.com. Submissions need to be a minute or less and in MP4 format. If you like this episode, share it, rate it, like it, and subscribe. See you next time.